welcome back, Warrior Kids. My name is Pam Palmiter, and I'm the host of the Warrior Kids podcast, which is now in its fourth season. Woohoo! And as all of you know, this podcast is taped before our famous live studio audience, Peter and Ernie. Oh dear, I have barely started our first podcast of the season, and already I have made a mistake. I'm so sorry, my puppy. Let me start that again. This podcast is taped before our famous live studio audience, Peter, Ernie, and Devo. That's right. Peter, the Boston Terrier, and Ernie, the English Bulldog, have a new little brother. We have a six-month-old puppy named Devo, and he is a whippet. Don't you love the name? I think it's funny. Do you get it? Whippet. Whippet good. No? You don't get it? Okay, way back in the 1980s, I used to listen to a song called Whip It, and the band that played that song was named Devo. When a problem comes along, you must whip it, whip it, whip it good. You know, whip it, Devo. Okay, well now I'm way off track, so let me just finish my introduction properly so Devo feels included. Here we go. And as all of you know, this podcast is taped before our famous live studio audience, Peter, Ernie, and Devo. I'm a Mi'kmaq professor who has created this podcast to celebrate everything Indigenous and work with warrior kids to help make the world a better place. If that sounds like something you'd like to do, then join us here every second Wednesday and learn some really cool things along the way. Yes, I know, Ernie. It's been a while since we did a Warrior Kids podcast episode. But it takes a lot of work to care for not just one, not just two, but three silly puppies. I had to take a bit of a break. All that walking, training, playing, feeding, and bathing, I'm all worn out. But I'm all rested up now and ready to start our new season. Oh, that's right, Peter. We can't forget to do our special shout out. Did you know that there is a very super duper awesome, amazing big girl out there who loves our podcast? Yes, it's true. Her name is Audrey. And her mom told me that Audrey listens to our Warrior Kids podcast episodes over and over and over and over again. Thanks so much, Audrey. We are really happy that you like our podcast and hope that you like this season's podcast as well. And thanks to all the warrior kids and warrior parents and warrior teachers and just warrior anybody who keeps listening to our shows, liking, commenting, sharing, and maybe just listening to it over and over again. Since we haven't chatted all summer, we need to catch up. How was your summer, warrior kids? Did any of you go on vacation? Perhaps some of you went to visit relatives that live far away. I heard that some kids went to summer camps and had lots of fun. Or maybe you had a staycation. A staycation is kind of a silly word that we use to mean a stay at home vacation. So you stay home for a vacation and maybe just chill out. Maybe you play outside with your friends or your siblings. Maybe you read books, plant a garden, do artwork, or maybe even enjoy a tree bath in your nearest park. I know for many Native Americans in the United States and First Nations in Canada, we have large community gatherings in the summer. Some of them are round dances and some of them are powwows and we do it all summer long, even into the fall. That's why summer is my favorite time of year. Oh, what's a powwow? Well, maybe I should do a whole episode on powwows. Would you like that? Okay, I'm going to put that on my list of ideas for this season. But for now, a powwow is where Native Americans or First Nations people go to sing and dance and drum and share food together. It's a lot of fun. Wait. What's that I hear? Oh, it's snoring. All three puppies are finally asleep. 
That means we can get right into today's podcast without being interrupted. But before we start today's podcast, it's important for me to let you know that parts of this podcast will have some sad parts in it. So if any of this podcast makes you feel sad, make sure you talk to your teacher or parents or whoever you love and trust about how you feel. It's very important to talk about your feelings, the happy ones, the angry ones, and the sad ones. Some of the things we learn about Canada is not always happy, but it's important to learn it. We need to know why bad things happened so we don't do it again in the future. This week's episode is all about today, September 30th. Do any of you remember why today is so special? Well, that is exactly what we're going to talk about. The five things you need to know about September 30th. The first thing you need to know about September 30th is that it's Canada's National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. This is the second year that Canadians will be celebrating the National Day of Truth and Reconciliation as an official holiday. That's quite a mouthful to say, eh? National Day of Truth and Reconciliation? So let me explain it a little bit. The truth part of Truth and Reconciliation Day is about the importance of learning about all the Indigenous children who are taken away from their families and forced to go to Indian residential schools. These schools were not like your schools. At these schools, Indigenous children were treated very badly and the teachers were mean to them. They were not allowed to speak their languages, they could not sing their songs or dance their dances, and they were not allowed to see their parents, sometimes for many years at a time. Most Indigenous kids didn't have enough to eat, and this often made them very sick. Sadly, some of those children passed away and never made it back home to their families, and this made all the families very sad. That's why it's important to learn about this, so that it never happens again. The second thing to know about September 30th is that it was not always an official holiday called National Truth and Reconciliation Day. It used to be known as Orange Shirt Day, and many people still call it Orange Shirt Day. Orange Shirt Day started in 2013, and the reason why September 30th was chosen as the day was because this was usually around the time that police officers, church people or government officials would come into indigenous communities and take their children away and force them into residential schools. And the reason why it's called Orange Shirt Day is because of the story of one residential school survivor named Phyllis Webstead. When Phyllis was a little girl, she went to residential school and the school would not let her wear her brand new orange shirt that her grandmother gave her. The school took it away from her and never gave it back. They also cut her hair and did not let her celebrate her native culture. So when Phyllis grew up, she shared her story so that other people would understand what happened in those residential schools. Phyllis has now written a couple of children's books about her story so that warrior kids can learn about it too. So ever since 2013, September 30th came to be known as Orange Shirt Day, all thanks to the hard work of Indigenous peoples honoring children who suffered in residential schools. And we all wear orange shirts. In fact, I have a whole bunch of orange shirts, and I wear a different one every year. The third thing you need to know about September 30th is that the holiday was one of the calls to action from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission report. What's a Truth and Reconciliation Commission? Well, Canada did a big study about what happened in residential schools. It was called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. It heard the stories from survivors of those schools, their families, communities, and even people who work there. The commission 
issued a report in 2015 about things Canada could do to try to make up for what happened in those schools. The report made 94 calls to action. And some of those next steps asked the government to educate Canadians about what happened and create a national holiday to honour the children. So, Canada followed the call to action number 80 and created September 30th as an official holiday. In fact, they passed a law last year to make this day a holiday. Canada also apologized to Indigenous peoples for residential schools in 2008. And the Mi'kmaq word for sorry is meskeg. Meskeg means sorry. The fourth thing you need to know about September 30th is why Canada did this to Indigenous children. Why did they treat them so badly? The sad truth is that Canada did this to Indigenous children because they wanted the lands of Indigenous peoples. Canada thought that if they forced Indigenous peoples to give up their cultures and identities, they would forget all about their homes and their lands. So Canada tried many ways to force Indigenous peoples to be like Canadians. Canada thought if they could make Indigenous kids forget about their languages, cultures and families, that they would not return to their homes and that would make indigenous nations disappear over time. Then it would be a lot easier to steal their lands. This was very wrong for Canada to do. The people in those schools who treated indigenous children so badly were also very wrong. All the things they did to the children caused much pain to the children and the families. And this was very wrong. But it's also important to know we have never forgotten our cultures, our identities, or our ties to our lands. And the fifth thing you need to know about today is that most of the provinces in Canada have not made September 30th a holiday. Only two provinces and two territories have declared September 30th an official holiday. That means that eight provinces and one territory have a lot more work to do to make September 30th an official holiday. Many of the Indigenous peoples in those provinces and territories are very upset that these governments are not honouring their children. We think this is very shameful. All governments should be part of trying to make amends for what they've done to Indigenous peoples, especially the children and the children who never made it back home. But you know what? Some of the cities in those provinces are honoring the holiday anyway. So we're very happy about this. Today is a day for Indigenous peoples and Canadians to honor Indigenous children and to help make things better moving forward. Oftentimes you'll find a little slogan on these shirts called Every Child Matters. And that's true. We should treat every child fairly. And right now, Warrior Kids are doing the same thing. We are honoring today together with a podcast all about September 30th. So, Warrior Kids, we learned a lot today on the Warrior Kids podcast, and I don't know about you, but I had lots of emotions. For some of it, I was very angry about what happened. And then when I heard about the kids, that made me really sad. But then I got happy again when I learned that there's so many kids and people all over Canada trying to make things right. Oh, and we also learned one new Mi'kmaq word. Do you remember? Okay, I'll tell you. Meskeg means sorry. Meskeg. So, Warrior Kids, we've worked on the education part of this podcast. Now, how are we all going to take action? Well, as you know by now, there are a lot of things you can do. You can wear an orange shirt if you have one. You can make a beautiful drawing of an orange shirt and hang it in your window for all of your neighbors to see. You can read some books about residential schools, maybe some of Phyllis's. 
Or maybe your teacher in your class can write a letter to your province or territory and ask them to make this a holiday. You might even be able to help change their minds. But no matter what you choose to do, I hope you all have a good day today. And we'll all be thinking of you, myself, Peter, Ernie, and yes, even the new puppy Devo. And don't forget, if you need ideas for fun activities, then check us out online at warriorkidspodcast.com. We have free coloring pages, free books, and even calendars that give you ideas for things to do. Thank you all for listening, learning, and acting. Till next time, later gators.